let me start it off broadly. Chidanand Rajgata, what, what should we be looking out for in India for Obama's uh, second term? You know, he'll come back more confident, surely a little bit more assertive. He wants to go down in history now, not just in the history of American politics. What will it impact for India, for our region, for India, US and China? Well, I think India uh, was in the happy position of uh, not really worrying about who came to power, uh, Mitt Romney or Barack Obama. But now that Obama is back for a second term, uh, you know, there must be some relief that there's a sense of uh, continuity. Uh, uh, this is important. Uh, there are no new, uh, you know, angles and new people to deal with. I mean, there will be new people, of course. Um, uh, we also have a new foreign uh, external affairs minister, Salman Khurshid, and I think the Obama uh, administration, the second administration, will have a new Secretary of State because Hillary Clinton has said she might not want to serve in the second term. But beyond that, uh, I don't see uh, too much uh, impact, um, you know, all the, you know, uh, now that the election is over, all the rhetoric uh, fades away, you know, the demonization or outsourcing, loss of jobs uh, will also fade and uh, there will be an element of pragmatism. <coughs> Uh, I also expect, um, uh, you know, a more tempered uh, foreign policy. Uh, you are not going to see uh, another big uh, war, uh, at least in terms of footprint. You are not going to see 100,000 American troops going anywhere because uh, I think there is a sense uh, that there was uh, what was, uh, you know, described as an imperial overreach. Um, uh, at the same time, Obama uh, will also be careful not to, uh, you know, uh, fall into what others call declinism or, you know, shrinking back. Uh, so there'll be a more tempered American involvement across the world, but the focus essentially will be on uh, domestic uh, economy, uh, reviving uh, United States. And to revive the United States, it really goes back to, uh, you know, engaging and trading with the rest of the world, and Americans can't uh, afford that. So no matter how much, uh, you know, you demonize um, or shout against the uh, outsourcing <coughs> flight of jobs, uh, the fact is, you know, trade, America has to trade its way out of its economic crisis. Well, you know, <clears throat> I've been reading a bit of the Chinese press. Uh, my second question uh, is to Andrew K.P. Leung. You know, on several portals and several news websites in China, almost very hyper-aggressive reactions to Obama. Uh, the state-run uh, Daily Global Times says Western governments have given up their responsibility to lead society and are now, now merely shuffling votes and voters around. Xinhua says, China bashing must stop now that the campaign is over. On another news portal, I found a very well-known analyst saying that Obama is a brazen trade protectionist who is trying to put economic and security pressure on China. How is China viewing the comeback of Barack Obama in economic and strategic terms, Andrew? Well, I think that uh, in Obama's uh, second term, um, will continue to be char characterized, as far as China is concerned, by A, trade, B, uh, geopolitics. As far as trade is concerned, no matter how much um, America is trying to do, um, <coughs> the country is unlikely to bring back all the jobs that have been outsourced because of globalization. Uh, if they bash China, it doesn't mean the jobs are going to come back because the, likewise countries like India and other Asian countries uh, would likewise export the kind of stuff uh, America consumers want. So uh, the China bashing uh, uh, during the election, of course, electioneering, but then um, in, in the uh, years to come, uh, it's likely to continue because um, America's, um, the whole American economy needs to be restructured. Now, uh, on the geopolitical side, there's a different ball game. And this is characterized not just by Obama, but also even Romney uh, should have won. Um, then the, the situation we bought would be the same because uh, China is rising uh, as a, um, a superpower, uh, as a perceived challenger uh, to American dominance. Um, and this is um, uh, typified by America's um, uh, recent uh, Asian pivot. Uh, in other words, um, as highlighted by the National um, um, Intelligence Council's report um, when Obama was first installed um, in, 1920, uh, in 2008, the uh, Americas are, are, are still the world's leader, but the capacity to lead is declining. Uh, what with the war on Iraq, what with the financial crisis. So America has got to reconfigure 
uh, its um, uh, assets. So um, America is, 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 try, is, is trying to finish the job in the Middle East and withdrawing from the Middle East, and it's now repositioning itself uh, in the Asia Pacific. And so this is um, uh, typifies, I was saying, by the Asian pivot. Ah. Uh, Asian pivot, um, it, it is not uh, 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 just confronting China. It's trying to rebalance the situation in the Asia it's Pacific a, uh, by, by forming more and more closer allies with um, a, a, I'm, China's I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm coming also, to that point. You know, um, because yeah, because that's okay. a very All critical right. point, Andrew, which you raise here. There are different perspectives. Right. Chidanan said America can't reach a uh, risk, as he called, declinism. What you seem to be suggesting now from the Chinese standpoint is that America must slowly re recalibrate itself and slowly pull itself back. I'm going to come to the issue of the South China Sea in a minute. But broadly, is America willing to give up? Raymond, do you think now that the election is over, protectionism is over, realism must step in? both in its relationship with India, but more importantly in its relationship, economic relationship with China. Raymond. Well, I, I think that uh, realism uh, does creep in and you have a lot of things that are said in great democracies like India and the U.S. that don't necessarily uh, translate directly uh, into policy. I would imagine that the Chinese are much relieved that Mitt Romney was not elected he said he was going to de declare them a currency manipulator on day one and was, uh, was very, very aggressive. I think the whole pivot toward Asia is simply a recognition that in fact uh, India, China uh, are rising and that is where uh, we need to put to greater attention. Uh, as for the United States uh, and India, uh, I know that a bilateral investment treaty uh, is on the anvil. I know that there are uh, great uh, forces in the United States of optimism that we can forge closer <coughs> relationships uh, with India on both the economic and security front. So I think the president is right. Uh, the best is uh, yet to come. And I don't see any sense of uh, decline or hand-wringing in the United States now about uh, a loss of, of world position. I think we want to be engaged with India. We will be engaged both economically and particularly on the security front. I think we've made great progress in terms of how uh, we view the common problems in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, we've made great problems and uh, great progress in how we view security in the uh, Indian Ocean, the whole question of uh, keeping the sea lanes open. Military cooperation has never been greater. We're fortunate to have strong bilateral support in the United States from both Republicans and Democrats for a strong U.S.-India relationship, and I see that continuing, and I think that's but all to the good. E 